So my name is Pit Kiyomani Van. I am the interim director of the Racial Equity Inclusion Belonging Department. Um, and just a little background of the, about the monument. So in 2020, the country was undergoing a racial reckoning and social unrest. The city of Burlington, REIB, decided to commission the first permanent structure dedicated to equity. This was under the administration of Mayor Weinberger. Thank you, Mayor, for attending. Um, REIB worked with BCA to find a selection committee to locate the artists and also worked with Burlington Parks, Recs, and Waterfront to find a location. Two years later, we are here with this amazing monument. Uh, Embrace and Belonging is not just a work of art. It is a symbol of our commitment to racial equity and invitation for all to participate in the ongoing dialogue. Next, I'm gonna have Sophie Swab, a comprehensive parks planner, come and share about the team. Thanks, Pitt, and thank you everybody for being here. Thankfully, the rain went away, right? Um, so just a few words about this partnership that has occurred to make this project a success and happen. Um, so our, it started, as Pitt was saying, with REIB and BCA and Parks working together, but it didn't end there. For the past few years, we've been working together to make this a reality. This is not something that happens every day in all of our uh, different departments. It's a special project that takes collaboration and helps us come together to honor each other's specialties and, and views and tasks and also elevate our work. And this has been one of those experiences. We've identified our similarities and our differences. We've helped break down barriers and heighten collaboration, which I think is also part of this um, momentous mo monument that is now here at Dewey Park. Um, so it's pushed us to go beyond our zones of comfort in some instances, and I hope that it helps everybody here push themselves beyond your zones of comfort on a daily basis from here on. And I'm happy to invite, um, or oh, it will. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a great line of speakers um, and a short performance program for you all. But first, I'm going to invite for Mayor Mulvaney Stanek to say a few words. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dewey Park in the Old North End, my home, my home base. I'm really grateful to be here with all of you today <clears throat> to help celebrate the unveiling of this beautiful sculpture. And I really want to start by thanking all the city staff who've been engaged in this process, from our Office of Racial Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging, as well as Burlington City Arts and our Parks, Water, uh, Parks Recreation and Waterfront Departments. Their collaboration on this project, I think, really illustrates how we can powerfully do things together across our city departments and really think about integration, learning from each other, uh, learning about different ways we can do community engagement, but also at the, um, at the end of the day, a celebration of really strong equity work and the arts, of course. This is the first permanent structure dedicated to racial equity, inclusion, and belonging in Burlington, which just really makes this a day of celebration. <clears throat> and all that cottonwood, which still makes me <laughs> allergic. Hold on. <clears throat> All right, this sculpture joins murals <clears throat> and other public, public art projects which reflect our community's cultural design. Look at this, teamwork. Thank you. I don't think I have <laughs> I have small children, so it's like it's, I live in germs, it's fine. <clears throat> This sculpture joins murals and other public art projects which reflect our community's cultural identity and values. This Embrace and Belonging monument will serve as a remind reminder to all of us to lean into equity work, to challenge our biases, and to always work to learn and understand. I also know, as a member of this community in this neighborhood, of the lessons we can learn around community engagement. It is a core value of mine and a principle of mine as a former community organizer and labor organizer to know that we can always do better. We can learn how to collaborate more, engage, to listen, and to really understand impact and build from that as we go forward as a community and city. And so now, with that, we have more folks from the city who will speak to this um, great project and the artist and uh, also some young people, my favorite part. Thanks so much for being here.
So next we have Burlington School District, Autumn Bangora, please come up. Uh, she has uh, some students that's gonna share some poems and some of their artwork around the monument um, from the Social Justice Club. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Autumn Bangura. I'm the BS Burlington School District Equity Instructional Leader. I've also had the honor of teaching at the Integrated Arts Academy, the school behind us. So we have Integrated Arts Academy students that are going to speak a little bit about arts integration and their own projects that they did. And we have some peer leaders from the Racial Justice Academy that will recite a poem for you. As per what I like to do, I like to turn it over to the youth. So let's hear from the Integrated Arts Academy students first. We are all students that ju that have just had gra has gra graduated from Integrated Arts Academy. The school features all arts such as drama, music, visual arts, and movement. Basically, all the arts you can think of. We combine regular school subjects like math or literacy with arts artistic subject. For example, this year, we did a unit combined music and learning about the solar system by writing songs and we did move dance movements to show different states of matter in science. It is an amazing and safe place with a great environment and great community with people from multiple backgrounds. It is for anybody and everybody. At our school, each year, the fifth graders work with BCA to create a, leg a legacy project. This year, at our school, this year, her, it made barn quilts, and it was a choice to add the Sankofa bird into our quilt square. To prepare her for our legacy project, we went outside to the sculpture location, talked about public art, and used was this for guiding, and used this guiding question for creating our art. What will you take from IEA wherever you go? We also discussed us that like that like birds flock our artwork this year will flock over to St. Mark's during our temporary year there, then move back to IEA when we return. Last year's fifth day fifth grade class also did a related legacy project of hanging doves, which is on display in the entrance of the building. Students last year also reflected on the sculpture which are in the Sankofa bird. This display includes painted feathers and birds. The guiding question for thinking about their artwork was, like the meaning of the Sankofa bird, what part of your IA experience will you take with you to be success successful in the future? Sankofa is an Akatan term that literally means go back and get it. One of the Akatanian symbols from Gahand, West Africa, describes a mythical bird flying forward with its head turned backward. Um, we also made a little poem about the Sankofa bird. Flying high through the past to come into the present at last. Flowing with creativity and art, all the birds have a heart. Looking towards our past, we see all that came before me. Always look back, we cannot forget the things that made us upset. The feathers flowing, the world unknowing, we are always still growing. My name is Matthias. My name is Aiden. And along with Kiki and Kali, we are the peer leaders at this year's SRJA program. <laughs> Kiki and Kali will be performing a poem for us that was presented in front of the Burlington School District at last year's SRJA program. SRJA is a program designed to help students peer lead and become leaders in their community. It is designed to help students create a change and it works. Yeah. 
Our poem is called BS. <laughs> BSD. What is this? Why should I be worried or scared that my siblings will have to face the same things I had to face in this district? Why should I be worried that my sibling is the only BIPOC student in their classes or have no BIPOC adults to look up to? Parents, what is this? Why should I go home and cancel my plans? Why should I have to clean and cook for your kids? Parents, why can't I be stressed and tired without being seen as ungrateful? You call us lazy because we're in bed, but you never let us go out. Why, why should, should we? we? No, we're not going to jump someone because we're black kids in a group. No, I'm not pretty for a black girl. I'm pretty, period. Wait. No, I don't dye my hair every month. No, you can't touch it. No, it's not a wig. Teachers, what is this? Why is it our fault that you can't get our names right? My name is Kiki, not Kali. Me and Kiki are not related. I'm Jamaican, not Nigerian. And, and finally, finally, why are we seen as ghetto and aggressive? This, this, this is, is some BS. BS. Uh, thank you, that was really great, very inspirational. Um, so next, uh, I'm gonna introduce um, City Council Milo Grant. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm so happy that this day arrived. I know this project at times has been a little controversial because there was some communication issues and there was some issues with regards to the first uh, picture that was sent out that was really out of scale and it, it, it made people nervous. Um, but the bottom line is this, uh, it's here now and it's beautiful. And I remember a conversation with former REIB director, Taisha Green, and I remember how excited she was. She's like, I'm bringing art to the old North End. And I just thought that was wonderful because in her short time here, she had been very intentional about learning about our different communities and the different people who live in our communities. And this area, this historic North End is such, you know, is the most diverse uh, neighborhoods in the city and we have so much to be proud of. And I think this monument is a symbol of that. And I hope we can all embrace it and we can feel that we belong here, that it belongs here. Um, and really make it a highlight of our of our area. Um, we should be allowed to have art as well. There are other art projects throughout the city, so it's great to know that something intentional was done for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Doreen Kraft, uh, Executive Director of Burlington City Arts. Oh, I couldn't find it. And with me is Cindy White, the director of Burlington Parks Recreation and Waterfront. So this is a very, very proud day for us, for this neighborhood, for this community, for this blessed place that we live. This monument stands for the values of our community. And a former REIB director said, this is radical belonging. It embraces everyone in a conversation about what equity means. I want to appreciate the artist who made this possible. Aichu. Come on up here, Aichu. from the city of Burlington, an enormous appreciation for the work, for the sensitivity, for the intuitive understanding of what this challenge was in the creation of this work and the embodiment of the community's intention in the work that you created. So thank you so much from all of us. Thank you. From this you. entire community. So just one more thing I want to acknowledge too, as the mayor has the incredible partnership this has been, 
the way you really deeply get to know who your colleagues are in the city when you work on a project like this that has so many tentacles and so many aspects of learning how to work together. I especially want to shout out to Colin Stores, our public art manager. What a phenomenal job you've done. Thank you so much for all of the work over these years. And to all of our teams who work together throughout this time, we're, we're just really proud today. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right, as Doreen noted, I'm Cindy White. I'm the director for Park Recreation Waterfront. And thank you all for joining us today in Dewey Park, which is one of the many parks in Burlington. Maybe after I've wor worked as long as Doreen has, I'd probably have shorter words. But I have a few that I really want to make sure I shared with you today. Since COVID, parks have enjoyed renewed attention as superstars, supporting both physical and mental health. The pandemic, however, also highlighted racism as a public health threat, seriously impacting the well-being of many members of our Burlington community. While BPRW's mission is to advance parks, recreation, and conservation to enhance the quality of life of all people, we all know that systemic racism was part of how our parks were formed, and we don't know all the backstories, but we are working on learning them. This park is the beginning of that learning. I hope you take a moment on the back side um, of the sign there. Um, we begin to look at the history um, of who lived around this park. What was the story when this park formed? We don't know all the details on this park. We've done a lot of research. I think John over there helped us do some of that research to really dive deep. And there's still there's still some some parts that we don't really know, but we did find out the history of who lived around the park, what were their stories, and how did they impact Burlington as it is now. So I want to thank John and thanks for Sophie and John and Max with our planning team um, for doing that work to, again to find those stories. The process of bringing Embrace and Belonging Monument to Dewey Park has been fiery, as noted. This was not an easy one. but. It brought us to a point of questioning, you know, making us really think about art, where it belongs in the city. And I want to thank everybody for working through it, for, and I would say for challenging us, not just, you know, letting this one go by. We, we all learn from it. But I think, as it's been noted many times, one of the best parts we learned about it was working together, even internally, to making sure that we're all communicating. And just there's such strong partnerships now um, internally through the city. And we promise to you that we'll continue those conversations because uh, we still have a part to, we still have next to us that we'll see how this monument functions over the next year or two. And then we'll, we promise that we get back to this little, this little and dead end of a road that's next to us that's been um, that way for many years. We did refresh the art, but we will come back to you. We're going to give it a year or two because we want to see how the monument impacts the space, um, and then we'll take that one on. Um, on a lighter note, I would just like to commend the ingenuity of our city arborist. Vijay's here somewhere. I think he's still here. Is Vijay here? Oh, he's hiding over there. So Vijay's our um, city arborist, and he, when he came to the space um, and he had to uh, do the planters to fix them up, he didn't just put flowers back in them, he actually put vegetables. So if you go over and look at these plants, there's tomatoes growing, there's cucumbers growing, there's bean plants growing, and I, we even have some peppers that are holding on. Um, so that was Vijay. Vijay did that. He comes and he makes sure there's waters filled with them. He excitedly told me today about that I make sure I carefully look. So I encourage you all to look at all the baby cucumbers. Um, so those are there for the community to enjoy. And he's got this great idea of where else can we bring that to our community. So again, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. We'd like to welcome the artist, Aichu Hopin, to say a few words. Hi, everyone. This is so exciting to see that uh, something I draw on a paper and come alive and it's so big and monumental in scale. It's all because countless wonderful people of uh, Burlington coming together to uh, uh, trust in me to bring their vision to life. I'd like to say a few words of the meaning of uh, uh, this design concept. 
the mirror image of a Sankafa bird, not only looking back to gain wisdom in order to build a better future, but also look at each other as a mirror image of themselves, recognizing the equal right of life, liberty, and pursuing of happiness, and look inwardly to see the sacredness of life in others. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. You can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be, unquote, Martin Luther King. We can see the two birds leaning together, symbolizing we cannot stand up without each other's support. Together, we can build the bridge of tomorrow. The small birds representing we are all a piece, we are all a little piece of a great whole. The birds of a conscience within each of us coming together, coming together as the water of a peace, soaring upwardly to create a great future. Quote, we must come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself, a society that can live with its conscience, unquote, Martin Luther King. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to introduce the uh, build of a future. Uh, this sculpture will now standing up without a great young artist, Chen Hopen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. Building this sculpture was, it was, you know, the first ever really big project I was ever able to be a part of. And as we were putting in this piece, we designed it, you know, to make sure that we had a resonating, reflecting surface to embody whatever the environment has around it and shine it out in a vibrant spirit to all those around it. And as we were putting in the sculpture, we come to learn that there was an individual that passed away uh, not too long ago. Uh, he went by a nickname of Birdman. <laughs> and we, we never really knew about this person it, and as we were constructing this piece, but as we were installing it, we had people come up to us, pass, passing by and telling us of memories about things about this individual, this eccentric artist that was just a part of this community, always expressing and inspiring others around him. And I, I'm speaking to the artists in the crowd. Express yourself. That's, that's truly just, you can make anything in art as long as there's human emotion, expression, that inspires others. And I encourage all of you to go out there and make sure to inspire somebody today. Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers for all those inspiring words um, in support. Um, next, we're gonna go on to the ribbon cutting and Mayor will do the honors. Integrated Arts Academy and I'm here at Dewey Park. I think the statue is so cool and I think it's really cool and I love it and all the details. I, I was really excited to be here today both from the perspective of having been mayor when a lot of work by many different departments 
got done to bring this concept into reality, going back years now. Um, also, just uh, as a parent, I've been dropping my daughter, Ada, who's uh, now just uh, is a rising fifth grader. I've been dropping her off here across the street, and we've been watching the base go in. And um, you know, my sense is that this sculpture is going to really add some definition to this small park. It's going to be a destination of sorts, and I am excited about the way in which it is a physical representation of our community's commitment to inclusion and belonging. Uh, I think a really fitting piece of work to come out of the very challenging uh, the period after George Floyd was murdered. So um, it's, this is a good day and I was glad to be able to be here and, and, and observe it. Hello, my name is Yusan. I'm at Dewey Park and I think it's really cool. What's really cool? Like the little bird design. Hi, my name is Sajja. I think the new sculpture is really cool and then I used to go to school at IA so I will have a memory of that there. So that would be nice. This was a fantastic project to work on uh, with my son Chen. And Chen has always been a helper to me many, many years, but this time I'm a helper to him. And on this job in particular, he became a man. He became a leader. He began the person pushing that I was the helper of. And that's just so gratifying as a father. I've been a sculptor for almost five decades. My wife has been a sculptor for three decades. And Chen is just beginning his career. And uh, in this job, he went from boy to man. You know? It, it <laughs> so, I guess my, my function on this team is to help to bring the vision of I Chu into physical reality so that it stays up and is permanent and uh, has a physical structure that will stand the test of time. Stand the test of time, but also you remember have the vision of your aesthetic in, in the, the work. And uh, that's always a challenge. Chen has both sides and uh, <laughs> he was he was part of that vision in this one and, and he built the it. surface in particular he poured he poured his energy into that surface i saw him just download his energy onto the surface of this piece doing a beautiful surface like a jackson pollock abstract expressionist painting and he went on his 22nd birthday 13 14 hours straight just putting images in the light of the surface. And I thought, ah, this is an artist. He's become really an artist on this one. So gratifying as a father. I get I was... wisdom and strength from my father <laughs> and fury and determination from my mom. Oh, thank you. You want to say anything? You say yes. Oh, I don't got nothing to say. Just look at the art. I mean, <laughs> the yeah, that's the message, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the vibrancy of the water is your in, uh, innovation. And I think this is a, a future that we can paint something, not just sculpture, paint the energy on the surface, creating this vibrant texture. Yeah, reflecting the light. Yeah. The, this is the dessert right now where we get to see the work that we've been working on enter into the place that it's meant for. And that is what is so beautiful about this project. Learning about this park, this meeting the people from the neighborhood, living here for a few days and seeing the work appreciated. And it has just come together with the, the, the place has given meaning to the space and the space has given meaning to our artwork. And you know, it's just a lovely experience being here in Dewey Park. So much about uh, collective creation. Uh, we might come here for community engagement and it's so beautiful to see uh, many walk of life coming together for something uh, speak to all of us. So I create this piece from the meaning of uh, how we are bonding together as a human being. Um, I believe the goodness 
in each of us. So I think there's a collective goodness can create the bridge that we can uh, start the conversation that how we can build beautiful future together for all children. So the birds of a small birds are like the birds of a conscience. The small birds are birds of a conscience that live within each of us. Each of us. So I hope in that uh, uh, positivity will evoke all of us to see that uh, we are each other's keeper, and all of us together we can build a greater future. So the two birds, they standing, they cannot standing alone. They standing with each other's support is a symbol of uh, we need each other to build a great future together. Uh, as the conscience, the voice of a con conscience within each of other can bring out the, the better of self and creating a greater society for all of us to live in. Yesterday, my life changed forever. Um, a question I've had for 17 years was answered. And I want to thank and give gratitude to Joseph Birdman Allen, to I Chu uh, Hopin, to Bill Hopin, to Chen Hopin, and to all of us who have chosen this. Can I point to it? <laughs> this sculpture right here. And in order for you to understand what I just said, which is a lot, um, I'm gonna take you to yesterday when I was driving with my daughter to the beach. I was about to drop her off and then I saw Bill and Chen, his son Chen working on the sign here. And I said, I have to pull over. I have to pull over. I felt Birdman and I thought, my gosh, he would love, love this sculpture. So I jumped out of the car and ran up to meet Bill, who's working on the sculpture, and said, oh my gosh, is this for Birdman? And he said, no, <laughs> I don't know who Birdman is. So I explained who Birdman was to him, and upon my explanation, we were hugging. And he said, my gosh, this is so incredible. My son's worked on this, I've worked on this, and it's the inspiration of my wife, I Chu, who really put this concept together and made this happen. And we both agreed that Birdman would absolutely love this, and that's why I stopped. As we were talking, Bill asked me to go over to his truck. He wanted to give me something. What he wanted to give me, can, I, can you see this? Was this magazine where him and his wife right, are, are right on the front there. And there's a great write up about him. in this magazine. Um, and as I'm looking at this magazine, Bill says, can you believe this beautiful, you know, 26 year old woman fell in love with me? And uh, I said, of course I can believe it. It's, it's love, it's purity. And then I said, you know, um, where does your wife's name originate? Where does it come from? Um, and he said, she's Chinese. And I said, yo, wow, you know, my daughter's middle name is Chinese as well, but there's a story behind it because I'm not sure what it is. Her, um, the reason I don't know what it is is because it was said to me seven, um, 17 years ago. It was said to me and I, can, I would be able to hear it, but the written part was taken by their dad before uh, my daughter Emma was born so I never really knew and um, so what happened was at that point Bill said could it be Chi Tian which means the center energy or the main energy of heaven and when I heard him say it and I was looking down at the magazine after 17 years of searching what that name was that was given to her by a living master um, who's now deceased it finally clicked 
So all of this, none of this would have happened. I wouldn't have known her middle name probably ever or anything like that. But all of that happened because I pulled over because of Birdman. <laughs> Birdman made me do it. And this incredible um, sculpture that has like, you know, unity and meaning. And I had no idea. I didn't even know this was going on today. I no clue. I just came in to meet I Chu and to see Chen and see Bill. I had no idea this was happening. So I am just, I have so much gratitude. And this is literally bringing everyone together and solving, like, making dreams happen. Thank you so much. This is like nuts. That's it. Yeah. <laughs>